So this talk is about reverse debugging. Now, what does that mean? So uh, first a bit of in introduction. I'm Armin Rigo. I'm part of the PyPy project. So the PyPy is uh, 14 years old, our implementation of Python, who focuses mostly on, on performance, as in if you have a Python program, like a Python 2.7 program, you can try to run it in PyPy instead of the standard C Python, and then maybe it will be five times faster. That's the goal of PyPy. Um, well, but we, this is not what I'm, what I'm here to talk about. I'm talking about RevDB, which, which is a kind of a hack did, uh, that, that, that I did by modifying PyPy. So it means, well, it means if you have a Python program that runs on the standard Python, well, chances are that it also runs on PyPy, and if it does, then you can use RevDB on it. Okay, but what is RevDB? What is a reverse debugger, generally speaking? So here I have the exa an example of a very large and complicated program. I mean, keep in mind, please, that this is a very large and complicated program for the purpose of this talk. So this has a bug. So it will fail the final asset sometime in the loop. Can anybody see why? Now it's just a list of x's, and the x dot value starts at five here. Here it's incremented to six. Here it's incremented to seven, and then we assert it is seven. But this fails sometimes, and it fails because here I put one x object twice in the list. So I have a big list of 101 objects, but there is twice the same. So it means here it will be it will be incremented twice for this special x object. Okay? So here it will fail with an eight for just one object. Okay? So you, you can imagine that this is an example of some very large and complicated program in which the same problem occurs, but you know, obviously it's well it's the kind of problem that you will have to track down for one week or something. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. Now, what can you possibly do? Well, if you have a reverse debugger, here is the reverse debugger. Okay, I'm at the end of the program. So it is something that has an interface that looks a lot like PDB, in case you know it. So I can print the value of x. Well, it's some object, but what is x dot value? Seven. What? What? <laughs> wait, 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 wait a second. Yes, okay. Forget about what I just did. Now, here it crashes, x dot value is eight, okay? Now, now the question is, if I'm here, I see that the x dot value is eight. Yes, thank you. Why is it eight? What could have occurred in the past to get the value eight here? Well, what occurred in the past, now I'm going to use magical common backward step, hop, and now I'm one step before. So here x dot value was seven. So it was seven just before I ran the line x dot value plus equal one. Okay? Well, so far so good. Okay. But then what what occurred with this x dot value? I mean, at this point, x dot value should be six, right? Because I should have incremented it only once in the loop above. So what occurred? So I can actually watch it. Now I'm going to watch this. Eh? Ah, yes, okay, sorry. I need to print x. 
So X is the object called dollar four. You see here at the start of the line. So I can print dollar four, that's the same object, and dollar four dot value, it's seven, and then I can watch dollar four dot value. This means I'm I put a, break, a watch point on the uh, the value of dot value of this exact object dollar four. Okay, so what can I do now? I can back continue my program. Up. So now I'm back in the past at the point where my dollar four dot value changed. So it says here dollar four dot value changed basically. So uh, what is it now? It's six. Okay, but I need to go back again to understand what is going on. Ah, now I'm hitting another time the same line. So now something strange is going on. Why am I seeing the same dollar four dot value changed by the same line twice in my program? That is, I mean, from the, how the loop looks like, it's obviously because X is twice in the loop, in the list LST. Like, what if I count them? Yes, there are two. So my, my object $4 is twice. So if I print the list, it is a long list of objects, okay? Here in this example, I've a bit reduced the number, I think, but you would see a list of 100 objects. But that, importantly, you see that this list is now called dollar six. So I can say that dollar six dot count of dollar four is two. Now, why is it two? Who puts twice the same object in the list? Let's watch it. And let's forget about the first watch point because I'm no longer interested. So now I'm watching changes to the expression $6.count $4. And I can back continue. When did this expression change? It's here. So here I get the point that adds the same object twice, well, another time in the list. So now, now I've figured out where the bug is. So it's really, well, think, think about this, this kind of playing around, and, and well, it would have worked just as well if the program was a huge mess instead of just one page. It would have found the exact same point. So now I hope that you're sold to the idea that reverse debugging is sometimes useful. <laughs> okay. This is a question that I will leave for later. How is that possible? F first, first, that you did not cheat. As in, as in, what I showed you is not a pre-recorded demo or anything. It's something that really works, and it's something that really works for large programs. And it, I mean, it, it, is, it is a tool that I developed because I had a bug. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, at one point, oh no, I have this bug, I will spend one week one week digging around. So, so what? Instead of spending one week digging around the code, let, let's make a reverse debugger, and then two months later, it took me only one hour to solve the problem. <laughs> Success. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a bit of context how, how I can get this kind of of uh, reverse debug reverse debugging going. So here I have a demo. That's the demo that we have seen. So if you run it, you see the assertion error. Okay, you you can run it with PyPy instead of Path, and you get very much, very much the same thing because well, PyPy is just a variant of Python. But, but the point is that you can use a special version of PyPy, and then, then I use an um, uh, environment variable to tell it to write a file that I'm calling log. Okay, so what, what occurred just now is that it ran the complete program, 
but it also wrote into the file log a log of everything that the program did. So you get this file log that is, I mean, it's not that huge as we could fear. It's maybe a few megabytes per second of execution, which is okay nowadays. Um, okay, so he, here I got the file log at the end, and then, and then, and then the, the point of reverse debugging is that once you get a log of an execution where something buggy occurred, then you can replay the log as often as you want. So here I have the file log, I'm going to keep it safely in a corner, and I'm using then another tool, for example, uh, roughdb.py, and this gives, you, gives me the prompt that looks like pdb. So it's a prompt where I can do things like that and go to the point where it crashed and well, enter my command and look around and kit and restart. And uh, the point that is, it's always the exact same recording that you can look around. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, the, the kind of features that you have, well, you, you have seen, the, seen them most, I mean, the, you have uh, next to go the next line, B next to go the previous line, a step and B step, and the difference between next and step is whether we want to enter function codes or not. And then you have continue and B continue, finish to mean run until the current function finish, and B finish, which means, of course, run, until the current, run backward until the current function was called. Uh, you can print something with P and watch something. You, you can use this, this uh, special, I mean, this is just, the, the, the dollar, dollar zero is just an extension of the syntax. So, like dollar zero dot something. Mm. Yep, that's useful mostly for watches because what you want to watch is typically the exact value of this attribute of this exact object here. But then you cannot really name the object in such a way that works at any point in time. As in, you, can, you cannot use a local variable name, for example, because as soon then as you do continue or back continue, well, this local variable is going to, to go out of scope. So what you do instead is you watch based on dollar zero, dollar one, and so on, which really means this object here, even if we go back or forward in time. <laughs> yes, and, and, and well, and then, and then you have a few more commands that are more common to debuggers, like break breakpoints on functions or file and line numbers, and so on and so forth. And I mean can break on a line, and, uh, like the watch points are triggered if you go backward or forward when you reach that line. <laughs> uh, yes, the, well, with, with this kind of example, uh, I showed on a very small example where we can really follow what's going on, but then on a larger example, what you want to do is, is to write down in a separate file, write down the things that occur in, in your program and keep that file ordered by time because you're going to go back and forth all the time and then you don't know anymore. You're getting very easily completely lost. So, so, so keep your file ordered by time. And the number here, the number on the left of the prompt before the dollar sign is the time precisely. Like if I do B step, it's decreased by one. So keep your logs, so keep your files sorted by this time. Uh, yes, you have a built-in help command with a list of all commands, etc. Okay. So what works? But what works right now? Like I mean, you can use it basically. Uh, you can run any Python code that PyPy can run. Yes. Okay. That's that's a lot of Python code. You can run it on multi-threaded apps. If you record what occurs in a multi-threaded apps, then when you replay the recording, you see the same, well, the same interleaving, basically, that was recorded. 
on how, how is that possible? Well, with the global interpreter lock. You know, the Python and PyPy have a global interpreter lock, which means that actually only one thread can run at a time with well-defined switch points. So with this in mind, it's not very hard to do, re to do the recording and replaying <laughs> in multiple threads. Uh, yeah, more interesting, if you, have a, uh, if you have a big program that uses tons of C extension modules, you can actually use RevDB. And you can go over the steps that would, I don't know, print something to the screen or do whatever, whatever I.O., etc. like call this function in this module that is going to compute the, the, the I don't know, determinant of this huge matrix. And you can, you can go one step after the other on the Python level. Of course, you cannot, well, it's not combined with a debugger that would be able to do the same thing in C. But then you can still debug on step by step on the Python level. Um, yep, the, here's a small warning is that when you print, when here I print X, for example, it gives me this string. This string is a wrapper of X, I mean X dot wrapper basically. Okay, but the point is that, well, for, for a lot of objects, we cannot call the wrapper method if the wrapper method is going to do, to, I don't know, to do things like uh, standard inputs and output or call things, we'll call things that would be in C or etc. So if you try to print an object but that RevDB cannot print you, you will get the error might uh, attempted to do input output or access raw memory. Mm -hmm. yep. What does not work so far, the main, the main thing that does not work is long running programs. So by long running, I mean more than a few minutes. So if you have a program that crashes randomly, well, there are two cases. Either it crashes uh, randomly, but only after at least one hour of execution, then, then, pff, then it does not work, then you lost. <laughs> or it crashes really randomly, and then you can run it for five minutes, interrupt, running for five minutes, interrupt, running for five minutes, interrupt, etc. Leave that running the whole night, and then if you are lucky, the next day you will get a crash that occurred after just a few minutes of the program starting. Okay. Um, okay, so, so the thing that don't work nicely so far is anything using the, the stacklet, greenlet, or gevent interface. Uh, um, anything that, anything where to really understand what's going on, you would need to track several processes of just instead of just one. Um, uh, Windows, Windows is not supported. It's, this supports POSIX basically. I mean, it works on OS X and Linux, and it's probably very easy to adapt to other POSIX systems. But Windows is harder, mostly because we use a lot of fork internally. I will come to it later. Uh, Python 3. This was an example running in Python 2. Now, P Python 3, well, this is done. So, as I said, this is a special version of PyPy. Okay? Now, a version of PyPy that would run Python 3, like Python 3.5, is getting ready, uh, as in, we should have the first beta out in two weeks or something. It's kind of getting there. Now, a version of Python 3 that contains RevDB is easy too, because the RevDB work was done, well, as everything in PyPy, it's done at the meta level, so it means, it means it's done by, by well, it's not, it is not done by going manually through the whole interpreter and adding logic everywhere. So it's done in a way that will be easy to do with Python, PyPy 3.5.2. Okay, so it's not done, but should be done soon. Okay. 
Now, what, what, I've, what I've just shown is reverse debugger for Python. Now, reverse debuggers are something with various names that is our code also omnis omniscience debugging or historical debugging or just backwards debugging. And it's, it is actually something that exists for the C language. For example, you have traditionally undo db, gdb, and more recently rr. Um, both, both of them are kind of working only on Linux. Uh, for, for Python, we have some experiments too, but they are not really the same thing. EPDB pod. Okay, well. This, this looked cool. Why is, it no, why is it not more well known as a technique, basically? Well, there are several problems. One problem is that it is, it is often a canon to take down a fly. Okay, like not always. So sometimes it's really useful, but most of the time, no. I mean, <laughs> like I, I spent two months doing RevDB, then spend one hour fixing one obscure bug in PyPy, and I've not used it anymore. <laughs> uh, I, th I think at one point I, I tracked it down because I was too lazy to run the normal PDB or something, but that, yes. I mean, it is an extremely useful tool, very rarely. <laughs> And um, yes, uh, so you also have issues like the performance. Like if you run a normal GDB or PDB, you expect you expect things to be to be mostly just as fast as without the debugger. But but here it's slower, as in the the recording the recording really has an overhead maybe two or three times, which is fine if you don't use it too often. Uh, well, there are more. More issues that RevDB does not have, I hope. The, like other programs that are doing reverse debugging tend to crash, I can say from experience, tend to crash a lot. And also they tend not to give a reliable history, as in you go to some point, you go back in time, you print stuff, but what you're getting is complete nonsense. It is not what, what should be printed at this point. It's just nonsense. So you have to guess if the debugger is now telling you the truth or not. And um, well, also, uh, there is also a bit of a non-technical issue is that these reverse debuggers, they actually tend to be proprietary software with very restrictive licenses. Like undo DB, well, I don't know if I should do but, uh, if I should publicize UndoDB or not, and in which way, because, well, yes, it's a great tool. We have used it in the past, but it is a proprietary software with a restrictive license. You cannot just install it on your laptop and run. Mm -hmm. Yep. So these are issues that RevDB does not have. So yes, this I exp explained already. The reverse debugging is a canon, but sometimes, hopefully, rarely, you will need the canon. Yep. Okay. So with this uh, end of the talk, I have some extra slides that go a bit into the how is it done side. If I have some time, we'll see. Maybe, maybe I'll start with the questions. And also, also we are well a bit of publicity here for. For the next uh, sprint, we're doing a sprint on PyPy in general, but that may include RevDB or, or, or not, depends on who is here and what, he, what the interest is. So it, it is going on in Les Ains, that's a VAD canton here in Switzerland, and everybody is welcome. So if you want to come for the weekend or for the complete week, it's fine. Please contact me. Okay, you have the URL for RevDB. Thank you. Thanks, Armin. Do we have any questions? We have some time left. Yes, here in the front. Wait a second. We have... 
Okay, thank you. So uh, it seems like this kind of data that you collect in that database that should compress really well, shouldn't it? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't try to compress it because mostly the, the main limiting factor is uh, recording time, five minutes. I mean, so the problem is that if you record for for one hour, the problem is that every replay is going to boot in one hour as well. So well, <laughs> it can get very very quickly annoying. So 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 if, if you limit yourself to five minutes, then I mean, it takes one gigabyte. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, it's just a temporary temporary file in a corner, right? Any other questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, can you watch a local variable? A lo can local you watch a local variable there? Because you, you watch the yeah. global things. But you, you, you have to watch objects, really. Okay. So if a local variable Ah, ah, you mean you, you mean if you the object X's, comes and goes, will it? Right. Well, well, here for example, I print X and then it say dollar zero. Then I can watch really dollar zero or dollar zero dot value. Right. So, so if it's a, X is a local variable in some function, mm -hmm. uh, and you start watching it, you mm -hmm. will only see it in the one uh, execution of that function. Because no, in the next execution, it will be a different object already. Y y yes, but you can't, basically. You cannot. You cannot say watch and use a local variable, simply. Okay. You have first to print the local variables that you're interested in, and then watch the numbers dollar num dollar five dollar six. Right. So you're you're always watching an object. But only this one is like it. It's not smart enough to figure out that I mean every time. No. I call this function, and then ah. variable is there. No, you, no, okay. no, you, you. Okay, that's more advanced features, but they are not. No, no, I, I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just curious yeah. if that yes, yes. works. Yes, yes. I mean, the here it's really watch points, which are really, really about. Now I want to look at this object here. All right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You want to ask something else? <laughs> no, I, I got a question <laughs> over here. Um, now he's talking about advanced features. Um, what's the future of this project? Does it stay an experiment or will it evolve? Uh, it works. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yes, it works. Okay, J it. just because you said you used it once, so that doesn't. Uh, right. I, yes. I mean, I mean, I, I've used it as in, in examples on toys and everything a lot, definitely. Okay, and, but, uh, and because you said there's going to be a Python free release, mm -hmm. probably. Yes, yes. So you're still working on it, I guess. Y yes, I mean, well, what I mean by that is that it's, it is not a lot of work. I mean, it's really a magic layer on top of PyPy, and then as PyPy itself evolves, like, like, will grow to support Python 3.5 or 3.6 in the future, etc., then, then, well, the same magic layer would work. Okay, but so, other so than this, there's no future plans. Sorry? Other than this, there's no future plans for... No, not really. Okay. I, mean, I mean, yes. Uh, as, as I said, yes, I could spend more time adding conditional breakpoints and everything, but, pff, well, also, what's the point at some point? Because, well, it's really a tool that is meant to be used once a year or something. May I ask the next speaker to come up and get ready? Do we have more questions? No, doesn't look like. All right, let's thank uh, Armin once more.